Since 1950, when India elected its first president, freedom fighters, civil servants, politicians, and even a scientist have held this office. But how does India elect its president? It's a bit complicated, involves some maths. But don't worry, we'll keep this video simple. First, the president is not elected directly by the people, but is elected by an electoral college, which is the elected members of all state legislative assemblies and elected members of both houses of the parliament. Basically, 4,120 MLAs and 776 parliamentarians. But nominated members of parliament are not allowed to vote. So sorry, Rekha Ji and Sachin, you don't get to elect the president. Wait, so hold on. So what you're saying is every MLA and MP gets one vote each? Well, it's not that simple. Now, generally in an election, each vote has one value. However, in the presidential elections, the value of the vote of each MLA varies from state to state. And this is done to give weightage to the population of each state. Meaning? Time for a quick math lesson. Now, the value of the vote of each MLA is calculated by the total population in the state, divided by 1000 and further divided by the total number of MLAs in the state. Hold your horses. Uh, you have to give me an example. Take the example of Delhi. So you take the total population of Delhi divided by 1000 into the total MLAs in Delhi and you get 58. By this calculation, the total value of all the MLA votes in Delhi is 4020. For UP, it's 83,824. And for Punjab, it's 13,572. So if you add it like this for all the states, the total value of all the votes of MLAs across all states in India comes up to about 5.5 lakh. But what about the MP vote? It's actually quite simple. So you take the total value of all the MLA votes and divide it by the total number of parliamentarians, 776. Which means that the value of each MP's vote is 708. Add it all up and the total value of all the MP's votes is about 5.5 lakh. Which gives us the total number of votes in the electoral college. MP's plus MLA's equals to 10,98,903 votes. Obvious, but we might as well say it, that the presidential candidate that is backed by the party which is ruling the most number of states as well as having the most number of MPs in the Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha will become the president. Wait, finally tell me, how is the voting done? I'll tell you. Now suppose that this is the official ballot and there are four presidential candidates. Now each MP and MLA ranks them in order of preference. One, two, three, four. If a candidate gets 50% of the votes plus one, then we have a president. Otherwise? Otherwise, the candidate with the lowest number of votes drops out and the remaining ballots are recalculated on the basis of the second preference. And this is done till the candidate gets 50% of the vote plus one. This is how India gets its president. Can you believe that this happens every five years?